Luke chapter 24, Ephesians chapter 6. <laughs> okay, we'll start at Acts chapter 1. We'll just start there. <clears throat> There's a couple of statements I'm going to make. First one is this. John Lake said, between faith and power, choose faith. For faith directs power. Smith Wigglesworth said, it is an insult to God for a person to ask God for power after receiving the Holy Spirit. I want to say it again. <clears throat> it is an insult to God for a person to ask God for power after receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, that was Smith Wigglesworth, who reportedly raised about 22 people from the dead. Uh, all kinds of miracles. I mean, just amazing miracles. Most of you have probably heard some about him. And here's a man that knew what he was talking about. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in the church today, we have a lot of people talking that don't know what they're talking about. So they'll tell you to keep on begging, keep you know crying out and doing all this kind of stuff and asking God for more power. Then they have to come up with different doctrines, such as the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, and they turn that into two different things. And they'll say, well, we got the Holy Spirit, now we need the fire. No, the Holy Spirit can't come without the fire. Amen. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have the fire, right? If you have the Holy Spirit, you have power. If you don't have power, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Uh-oh. Okay, see how that goes that way? That's the way it works, right? See, we might not always like the way things are, but it's better to know than to not know, because at least if you know, you can fix it. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> There's a whole lot of things that uh, the Bible says that we just gloss over because we want to cater to people's feelings. And because of that, we end up saying things that are not Bible. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, Wigglesworth also said very simply these three things. Believe, receive, act. Pretty simple, isn't it? Yep. Believe, receive, act. That is the process. That's how you got saved. That's how you got into the kingdom. That's how you operate in the kingdom. Nothing changes. It is simple, right? But you cannot make it into something. Well, if you add other stuff to it, you're going to end up muddy in the water, so to speak. And the more you add to it that's unnecessary, the less it works. Now, we've got two different schools of thought. Both are kind of right, okay? And where they overlap is probably where the most truth is. <clears throat> Number one, that, uh, and, and like I said, there's truth in both of them. I'm not discounting the fact there is some truth to this. But, well, I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is. On one side, you have people who believe that the way to get their needs met or anything that they need or whatever else it is, however you want to say it, whether it's healing, finances, blessings, relationships, whatever it is, the answer is to get closer to God. And they say because of that, that there has to be an intimacy with God, and the, the, which is true. Again, I remember I'm not saying this is not true. It is true. You should have an intimacy with God. The problem is whenever people mention intimacy with God, people automatically fall in a ditch. Well, that must be my problem. I must not be, have that intimate relationship with God like so-and-so has. And the bad part is when you start mentioning intimacy like that, you never know how much is right or you never, actually that's, that's a uh, trap of religion because it will always keep you trying for more. And you can't try to have intimacy. You get that? Now, when I say that, what I mean is this. Now, you can spend time with, with God. You can spend time with a person. You can get to know them better. And that is all true and you should do that. But... You just having an intimacy with God does not get your needs met. Lots of people know God, walk with God, talk with God regularly, hear from God. I mean, just amazing relationship with God. And yet they're sick, dying, hurt, broke, whatever the problem is, their intimacy with God did not fix it. There's nothing in the Bible about intimacy with God fixing your problems, right? Now, it does tend to make your problems more bearable. Okay, but it doesn't fix your problems. And so you need to realize that. Now, that's one side. Everything is total intimacy, total just, oh, more God, more God, more God. Okay, the other ditch is it's more like God is a machine. And if you push the right buttons, you get your answer. Okay, and like I said, both sides have some truth. Now, God's not a machine, but if you do things the way he said to do them, then you get 
what he said he would give you. Pretty simple, right? I see a lot of people don't like that. We like the idea of, well, it's all by grace. Well, how do you think you even have the right to approach him? See, it's by grace that gives you the right to approach him. But when you approach him, it says approach him boldly. You got that? And so that is the aspect. You see, grace is God's part toward us. He makes it available. That's grace. Faith is our response to his grace that allows us to obtain the things that he has given us by grace. Is that simple? Pretty easy, right? Now, that does not mean you don't have to do things to get it. Now, you say, what is it? Whatever your need is, because he has promised to supply all your needs. So whatever your need is, there is a way to get it, and that way is through faith. God is not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. Without faith, you can't please him. Without faith, you cannot receive anything that he has offered. You got that? So it's not all grace. You understand that? Now, it's grace on his part. And without, if he had not offered it, you couldn't get it. But, and he offered it by grace, meaning without you deserving it. And so he offered it. That him offering it is the grace part. But you getting it is the faith part. So your uh, focus, necessarily, isn't on the grace. Why? Because that's God's part. Now, you can believe that, you can believe in grace, and you should believe in grace, believe me, but at the same time, your part is faith, right? Now, I'm going to say something here that I know is going to go against the flow of a lot of stuff, but Jesus said to people who were not born again, your faith has healed you, has saved you. Is that right? He did not say, my faith has saved you, healed you. Is that right? right? Now, you have to understand, faith is faith. Faith is faith in God that he will and has done whatever he said he will do or has done. You get that? Your faith, now, now get this, it is your faith in him. Okay? Now, people have said, well, you know, but now I live by the faith of Jesus. Okay? People that say that, they're poor theologians. Let me put it that way. Why? Because when it talks about the faith of Jesus Christ, it is not talking about his personal faith towards God. It is talking about the faith of Jesus Christ, which today is called Christianity. So when you talk about living by, his, by the faith of Jesus, it is by the faith in Jesus that is the faith of Jesus. Now, it's not his faith. You don't get saved by his faith. You get saved by your faith. Do you understand that? So it's your faith in him. It's not his faith in him that gets you saved. It's your faith in him. See, there's all this stuff going around where people act like, well, that's all Jews faith, so it's a done deal on this side. Well, it may be a done deal, but it's you still have to have faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't get any of the promises. Why? Because it is by faith that we receive the promises. You get that? <clears throat> 